Perfect. It's being recorded. So, uh, Aniket from India and Ali from Brooklyn, Juan from Mexico, yeah, Jasmine, Yasmin from Brazil. Hello, Jim. Good to see you. Jim uh, is in Boston. Damien from Poland, and more people are joining. That's great. Um, we'll take a few more minutes to let more people to join, and then we mm -hmm. could start. Yeah. Many, many people actually sign up for this event. We have more than 600 and something people sign up. I That's assume crazy. that many people sign up uh, to get the recordings. Uh, but uh, the more people uh, are here, the merrier. We're almost at 70 people capacity, so we're at full room. Um, great. So we have Shelly from San Francisco, Noah from London, and by the way, everyone, um, we would really appreciate it. We just started out uh, increasing our Instagram and, and, and basically creating more content on Instagram. So please make sure to tag us, create a story right now, tag us, say something that you'd like to learn today or during this session today. It's um, and just at UX Writing Hub, simple as that. And you can also, of course, feel free to tag a system wizard, which is uh, the account of Marie. And please tag us, tag both of us. We would love to uh, to see you. We would love to see what are your takeaways from today. It will help us for our marketing to spread the world, to make sure that more people will get to see uh, it. And can you see my screen, by the way? Marie, people can see my screen right now. Uh, I can't know. see your screen. No? Oh, maybe... Can you see a screen that says Live Demo Content Designers Toolbox? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is your screen. That's right my screen. Now. All good. Okay, cool, 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 cool. So nobody can see my screen. No worries. So uh, this is our uh, Instagram. Just uh, tag us uh, at UX Writing Hub. Uh, and also I'm going to and the account of system wizard as well and uh, we are 100 people on this call thank you for collaborating thank you for being here right now christina from argentina allison from outside of boston uh, very happy to and have someone you here. from another galaxy i'm <laughs> curious someone said they were from another galaxy i wonder sunny uh, sunny sun another galaxy uh, <laughs> i wonder where it is uh, cool. Uh, we have people from Dubai, Dale from uh, Plymouth, and not another galaxy. Uh, yes, you are going to receive the recordings for sure. Um, mm, Jenny could see my screen, I see. Okay, interesting. Anyway, we would really appreciate if you would just tag us on Instagram in a story, for example. You can upload a story. And maybe one takeaway, maybe share your experience, something like that. It would be very, very helpful. And for us to spread the world, we're doing this type of events for free. So that's basically our marketing right here. And so it will help us to more people to learn about what we do and will help us to produce more of these type of events for our community. And so without further ado, I will do a short introduction. Uh, so Marie Pierre Rochon, uh, I've been following your account, I feel like for the past five years, maybe more, you're one of the first, first people that were in my radar um, when I uh, did research for the UX Writing Hub. So I looked, uh, I, I basically had to, to check under every stone where I can find UX writers and people that understand what I'm talking about. And you were one of them. Mm -hmm. I think you, you were one of the only like 10 folks in the world that were actually talking about it, um, which is quite unique. And I feel like, uh, you know, there weren't a lot of people that knowing about it even back then. And uh, now we're talking about another field that I am highly passionate about, which is building your own system and uh, systemizing your work, being really productive, and you call yourself now the systems wizard, which I love. Yep. And the students of the UX Running Hub already know that I'm all about building systems, using Airtable, 
no code tools, automate everything we can do, or at least making it extremely organized so uh, we could onboard more people to our processes. And yeah, now we have you. Very happy for this talk today. Today, you're also going to show a demo of the Notion template you've built for content mm -hmm. designers and people who can actually buy it uh, for discounted rate in case they would be interested in that. Uh, yeah. So without further ado, Marie, happy to have you here. Thanks. Thank you very much. Um, thanks for having me here. I was going to, um, when this demo came about, I just asked um, people that I knew, hey, if I did this live, instead of doing a demo video that I put along with my template that I'm recording on my own, would you like to do it live? And part of it, that's my UX writer hat that I've put on because a lot of people, um, after a while, you realize when you're a UX writer, you don't just make a choice because it sounds good or it works for other people. You make a decision because you've talked to your users, you talk to the people you serve, and you've asked them, hey, does that work for you? Does that not work for you? What makes sense to you? Um, so when I ask people, would you want to see it live? Would you want to be able to ask questions as I'm working through it? Well, you guys said yes. And yeah, there's a lot more people than I thought there would be when I just put the question out there. And I'm really happy that um, I've partnered with Yuval and the UX Writing Hub for that. Just a quick anecdote before I really jump into it. Um, this whole presentation, the Zoom session, the links, the promo, all that, it all came together with one Notion doc that we shared, where we shared all the information of what we were doing and a couple of DMs just to be like, hey, I have a question about this, question about that. So there were no emails, no Slack messages. Um, we used Twitter just because that's how we got in touch. But Notion is the tool that we use to basically answer all our questions, to make sure we were on the same page and to share how this was going to happen. So it was really good that it worked that way too. First time I'm organizing so events for my uh, Twitter DMs, my, I must say. <laughs> it came together really quickly. Yes, um, it did. Today, I'm going to tell you a little bit about who I am so you understand how I've gone from being a content designer towards working with systems, putting in place what I call magical systems with Notion or whatever other tool people um, need to make their life a bit easier. I'm going to tell you also a little bit about Notion because I assume that some of you, you're from the content design side of things. You've kind of heard about Notion. You might not know what it is. So there'll be about a five, 10 minute um, chat about what Notion is about specifically. And I'll show you how you can go from a really simple plain doc to a database that allows you to make sense of your information. And then the bulk of it will be, I'll present the content designer toolbox. I explain how it came together and I'll show you exactly how it works. And we should have some time for questions at the end. Um, I also have a little bonus discount for those who stay for the live session. So um, I hope you'll stay with me. There's a recording also, if you have to go, don't worry, you'll be able to have the recording after the session, we will be say, sending the replay to everyone. So who I am, um, I'll have to move a bit, <laughs> I think. Um, my name is Marie-Pierre Rochon. I call myself a systems wizard. Basically, I put in place systems that make your work, organizing your work, knowing what you're working on feel like magic. Um, it's really easy to get in the trap where you feel like you're spending more time organizing your work than actually writing or editing or talking to your users. I was a copywriter for more than 10 years. I did websites, landing pages, um, content writing. I did a little bit of everything. But around 2016, 2017, that's when I noticed things started to change. And a lot of the companies I was working with, I would end up spending more time with the designers and the, develop the developers helping them write what they called the boring stuff. So the buttons and the forms and the error messages because they never or rarely got the help from writers. It was pretty rare for them to have someone come from the marketing team to try to help them write these. Um, and that's when I realized I love this stuff. It makes products so much easier for people to use. I feel very useful as a writer rather than someone who sells. Um, and it's just what spoke to me. So in 2020, middle of the pandemic, um, I released a book. It's on LeanPub. You can still get it. It's called UX Writing Basics. It's the book I wish I had when I got started, when no one else was talking about UX writing or very few people were talking about UX writing at the time. 
today, how I've switched to do that towards um, making Notion template. Like I said, I realized I spent more time organizing the information, organizing people's content. Um, as a freelance UX writer, a lot of times I had um, small startups or people who were at the beginning of their journey in terms of um, integrating best practices, hiring writers, and they had no clue what to do with their content. It was often just straight into the Figma file. There was no way to track different versions. There was just the version that was live and that was it. There was no way to track different versions to test them to see what would work well. Um, they weren't necessarily talking to users as well. So I had to put in place a process where they could get some feedback from users to know that what they were doing was working well. Um, so because of that, then I decided, you know what, that's my favorite part. Um, it might be boring to other people. For me, organizing people's information is what I love. So today what I do is I make Notion templates for content designers, but for a bunch of other stuff too, um, for writers, for course creators, um, for people who just need to plan their dinners because you can use Notion for a bit of everything. I also do one-on-one -on -one, uh, Notion consulting um, and I do consulting and create custom workspaces for small teams and freelancers. A little bit about Notion for those who have no idea what it is. Um, Notion is a no-code tool that you can use to organize pretty much everything. When you first open it, it looks a little bit blank. They have really good um, onboarding where they set you up with a few pages to show you what it can do. But when it comes time for you to put in your own information and use it for yourself, that's where it can be a little bit intimidating. However, there's a lot of templates either done by Notion or by people like me that are very accessible that help you pick and choose what works for you. Um, what I use Notion for, I use it for project management. I use it to uh, plan my meals. I use it to plan. We have a house. We had to do a lot of renovations. So there's a mix of budget, being able to prioritize what needs to be done, prioritize the contacts of all the contractors that we might need to contact and all that. So it can be a bit of a CRM. So if you need to have a list of your clients, you can do that with this. You can even do simple web pages. Um, Notion is a tool that is very secure and most of your information can keep private. But if you want to, you can make a page public or like you, Val and I, when we organized this, there was a page that was just him and me that we could both collaborate on. Now, if you don't have Notion yet, um, you can scan this um, if you want to, and it will take you to the sign up page. Full disclosure, I'm an affiliate. Notion is actually free. So the personal account allows you to do a lot um, and it's free to use. And I used the free version for a really long time before I decided to upgrade. I upgraded because I want to make this the work that I do. You don't have to upgrade it to make it work. Um, you can easily use it without having the free, uh, the, the paid version. So just start with a free plan and go from there. So right now I'll just need to get out of this presentation and I'll jump straight into Notion. So when you get into Notion, I'll just show you, this is Notion basics we're covering right now. So when you get into Notion, it looks a bit like a blank, blank page. On the left, you see that's my sidebar. These are my pages. These are different categories of things that I have built. I'm just going to hide it for now to show you um, what it can look like. It looks really blank. It looks really plain. And that's the bit that can be intimidating. Um, but all you can do is simply get started. For example, just say that's a Notion page. And there's some tools at the bottom here that allow you to decide what you want to do with your page. You could just go ahead and start writing. As you can see, it says write something. Or you could, for example, I'm going to take a to-do list and you make yourself a nice to-do list. That's the first thing that I use Notion for um, and that I see a lot of people use Notion for is they use it as a place to do a to-do list. And it starts off with a list that looks pretty much the same thing as what you would do on paper. Um, it says my body is covering some of the words. Was it the words at the bottom? Or I'll adjust the screen. How's this? Is that better? All right. For now, okay. it's, it looks okay. Uh, For now, it looks um, okay? No way. I can. If people want to be patient with me, 
I'll change the setting so that for right now, you'll see just the screen. Because I right. think now is the time where it okay. would be useful for you guys to see everything. So now it's working right. really well, at least on my, right, good. my I'll side. come back at the end when I've showed you everything. All right, so Notion page, a simple page, looks really intimidating. You can make it look kind of cute by adding um, icons and start to um, change the covers just to have a bit more of color or a visual identity that matches what you want to do. Um, so when I started using Notion, that's what I would do. It's just a simple checklist. When I was done, I'd click it, but it kind of stays like that. The part of Notion that makes it really powerful is when you use a database. So right now I'm going to show you, I'm going to add a database. So what you do is you can do just the dash. I start writing database. I'm going to add the database right there. And I'm going to move all my things into this database. So I can move my thing one here. I can move thing two, oh, I didn't move it properly, thing three. So there's a way, it can be a bit tricky, this one, where it moved and it didn't transfer this. Wait, I feel like there is a problem. They say, maybe if you will uh, close your what does video. What say? Marie's video is covering the presentation screen. Uh, uh, right, on my end, I can move it around. This. Maria is saying that, okay. By the way, you can move around the video of Maria right now. Okay, see so some people see just fine. Ah, okay. Okay. If right, you can't see going. the screen, you could just uh, move move it around. Okay, thank you, Maria, sorry to okay. So now I've got a database where I've moved some of the things and that's where it gets interesting because you can add some different properties. So right now it has it as um, just tag and it's this is a property where you can decide to add some type. So I could say this one is important and I've got one that's urgent and one that's on the back burner because um, it's not that crucial to do it. And then I can start to tag my things, depending on what it is. And once you've tagged your things, you can start using sorting functions or filters to decide what you can show. Things are useful to know that you can add in a database when you're um, a content designer. You can add dates. So that's a really good one for adding a due date. There are some automatic dates that you can add to if you go all the way at the bottom, create a time, and you'll see below it also had created by, so that you can automatically track who added something to the database that you might be sharing with your team. So that one will automatically say when you've made the item, and it remembers, so you can see I put these ones, so that first item a bit sooner than the second one, so it knows the exact time. You don't have to show the whole time if you don't want to. And then another thing that is really interesting for content designers, you can add files and media. So that will allow you to put, um, to upload your, your images, your videos and your files directly, or my favorite, um, Figma file. So if you add a Figma file in here, you'll put a link of the file that you're sharing. And when you click on it, it takes you straight to Figma. So you don't have to copy a link from Notion to then go into your Figma to find the right file. It talks to each other. And you'll see in the content design uh, toolbox in a little bit how you can even see your Figma file inside your Notion. So you don't have to leave Notion at all to see what it looks like. So this is just the basics of how you can take a really blank Notion page, start with a list, make yourself a database, and then play with the different properties and see how it works. And if that seems a bit too intimidating, if you go where there's a left sidebar, you go at the bottom left, right here, if you follow, there's a lot of templates that you can start with. A lot of them are already pre-made. They're free, they're part of it. So you, if you click on templates, you'll see there's to-do lists, projects and tasks. There's project management templates that include sprints. So if you work with sprints, it's really good for you. Um, but you can also make um, wikis. It's really good for internal and external documentation. So go ahead, go in the template section, have a little look and see um, what works for you, what you think might be useful for you. All right. 
So this is the basics of Notion covered. Now let's get into the content designer toolbox, which is the reason that you guys are here today. Um, the content designer toolbox came about because of Tori Pomazlowski's book, Strategic Writing for UX. That was the one book that existed or actually it got released when I released my book on UX writing. One of my favorite things about um, her book was towards the end, actually, she's got a 30, 60, day, 90 day plan so that if you're a new UX writer, either new to the company or the first one that they're hiring, um, she's got a sort of plan to help you wrap your head around all the things you need to know about the product that you're writing for um, and a way to have meetings that I will call discovery notes in this uh, template with really strategic questions questions that help you kind of get a lay of the land and see where you're at and make a plan for managing your projects and moving forward and having a process that makes sense for everything uh, for everyone in your in your group so that's what inspired the toolbox and it started with I'll just do a 30 60 90 day plan to no no, no we need tools to support that plan so the toolbox um, so I'm just scrolling down a bit so you can see a bit better so on the left there's the start with these these are the tools your hammer, it's your drill and all that. It's the things you're going to use fairly regularly. Some of it you'll use a bit more at the beginning, but you'll come back to them over and over and over again. And then on the right, it's the project management side of it. It's where you're going to keep track of all your content, all your projects, and all the tasks that are associated to it. The two of them work together, even though they are slightly different. So yeah, on the right, it's like your blueprint and your building materials. On the left, it's your tools. Put together, you're building your whole content design house. So I'm gonna take you through each of the pages um, and explain a bit what it's about. So as I said, this is inspired by Tori's book. Um, if you haven't had the, a chance to read the book yet, do it. It's a really good book, whether you're a content designer, developer, or just in general, it's really good um, to have a different way of thinking about writing that isn't marketing or copywriting. So for the 30, 60, 90 day um, section of this template, I've put in a quick summary of what each section is about. You really need to read the book if you wanna get into the details of it. And for each of the section, there's the pages, like here in the research in your first page, First phase, you're trying to figure out what the company is about, what the users want, uh, what the challenges are. So you'll be using especially the discovery notes. You're going to start building your style guide, and you're also going to start adding to your projects and tasks. Now, if you go day 30 to 60, um, that's where you're going to start really building your content database, adding all your content into the database. Um, and you're going to Keep working on the style guide, possibly finalize it. Now, in her book, she says that kind of happens in the day 30 to 60. In reality, I've known companies to have uh, style guides that are mostly evergreen, but that keep evolving all the time. Language changes all the time. Your style guide should have a capacity to change um, when the need arises. Day 60 to 90, that's why you would think more about long-term priorities um, and goal setting. I don't have anything specific in this toolbox for that. Goal setting is a very personal thing. It can really change from one company to another. And this toolbox is a toolbox I made for myself as a solo content designer that needs to track everything for my clients. Um, so the strategy often was a piece that was I was aware of, but it was outside of my responsibility. That's why it's not part of this toolbox in particular. And then day 90 and uh, beyond, it's supposed to become maintenance and routine. Doesn't mean there's not fun projects going on, but you should have a process sorted. By then you will have used all the different elements of the toolbox and it should start to make a lot more sense. So I'll just go back up and then we'll get into what feels more like a tool, the discovery notes. So as part of the first phase, uh, she mentions meeting with people and asking them lots of questions. So what I've made here is a data, uh, discovery notes database. And I'll show you what it looks like if we add a new one. You can add a new one by clicking new. You can add a new one also going to the very right, the blue button, and you click new meeting. So let's say for fun, we're going to be meeting with you today. today. The date today, I'm going to give him a title. So he's the founder and the role type. 
uh, we would say he's an executive. So down here, you'll see when you click the meeting note, when I said new and you click meeting note, you can add your own notes straight away, or you can answer these questions. These are the questions that have been thought out from the book that can help you really understand um, what people want. I've just put some random bullet points for you, but you can delete them and start writing your own note. So this is part one of the discovery notes. Now what's gonna happen, what you probably would have already experienced is when you're meeting with new people or users, they will come out with some uh, vocabulary that is new to you um, or that you start hearing over and over again and you start to wonder is that something we need to consider as part of our style guide you'll make discoveries about the kind of tone people enjoy the tones that they don't really click with and that's where i've put in here um it's linked to your style guide so you can add new and you can say let's say uh, that this person says a new term actually the new term we're going to go with microcopy because when I started writing uh, UX writing, every single spell check was um, confusing microcopy for microscopy. Uh, and it was a thing that we had to change in every single dictionary. Otherwise, it just switched it automatically. So let's say I talk to Yuval, that's my discovery note with him. Microcopy is a term that we've agreed exists for real. It's the type, we're gonna say terminology. And then what's the rule? not microscopy is the rule. And then for example, we write microcopy. Whoop. There you go. So this is something you can do as part of your meeting notes, meeting notes when you're doing your discovery um, meeting. Now, let me show you where it integrates with the style guide. So we'll move on to the style guide. So in the style guide here, so over here, um, if you click on the first, you'll see there's like different tabs to see different elements of the style guide. The first one, rules we follow. These are rules that you would have decided. These are part of my style guide. They're approved. They're active. You can see on the right here, it says status active. And these are the rules that we should be using throughout our product. To be reviewed, these are the notes you would have taken in your meetings. So you can see here, just here on the third, I've got the microcopy. It was automatically tagged as to be reviewed because it was a note taken during a meeting. And then it's up to you to decide when you're gonna have a time with your team, with yourself to decide, hey, we want to approve this. That's gonna be part of our style guide. So if I change the status here and I say, yeah, that's good. It's a term we wanna use. It goes away from here and it goes into rules we follow. Um, I've put a place for old rules so that you can archive rules. Rules change, language changes. And it's useful to know the old rules because you might have writers on your team who've been there for a longer time and they might have used a rule that made sense then that doesn't make sense now. Um, so to verify when a, a rule might have been used and when it was called off, it's it can be useful to keep it there. And I also have a not approved because someone might say something in your meeting, doesn't make it law. It's not because someone says, I want to hear this kind of tone, that that's the tone you've decided to go with. Um, but you can still make a list of it because then you can see, are there things that are not approved that keep coming over and over and over again? And you might want to question why that happens. All right, let's go to the third part of the tools part of the toolbox. I've made a resource database. So for now, the resource database includes a lot of some of my favorite UX writing resources, and it's just straight links. The reason that you might need a resource center for your content design work, however, is to have some more specific resources to help justify your writing choices. Um, for example, over here, I've got Nielsen, Nielsen Norman Group. I've used them a lot because they often have specific data uh, based on research to help decide how we should say things, what seems to work better, what doesn't seem to work. I went to their website recently and I, I thought, okay, what's a resource that's very specific that might help me with my writing? So all the way at the bottom, you'll see, and I'll open it to show you completely. They have a new video, it's called Cookie Permissions Guideline. 
So I've put this as part of my resource guide and I've got the link here where it's the link to the video where they explain what their guidelines are for cookie permissions. So that next time I have to write a cookie disclaimer for a product, I can go straight into my resources and think, okay, this is the, um, this is the, res the resource I decided to choose to help guide my decisions. So that especially if you have a long chain of approvals, you have the data, you have the research to prove that the way you wrote it is the way that it should be done. So this is what the resources guide is for. And then the last part of the toolbox is the UX content, uh, UX writing checklist. So this one, I will go a little bit quickly through it. Um, let me just go back to the um, homepage of the content designers toolbox. There are right here in the how to use this template, there's already demo videos of how to use the UX content checklist and how to customize it too. It's um, a template that's available. If you want just the UX writing checklist, you can get it for free from uh, my Gumroad shop and you can use it as a standalone. It's separate from this one. This one is integrated with the content as part of the content uh, management and project management tools that I've got for the toolbox. So the way this tool works is that you have a content piece and it helps you decide if your text meets six, what I call the six principles of UX writing. Is it clear enough? Is it simple? Is it short enough? Does it sound human? Is it inclusive? And is it accessible? Now, if you see here, if you try to click this, it's not gonna work. It's gonna give you a formula and that doesn't make sense to you. So what you've got to do is on the tabs on the top, for each of the criteria, so if I go clear, you'll have questions to answer. Um, for example, if I have a new one, I can decide, okay, is there a specific goal? Yes or no, I ticked it. Is there support information written already? Oh, I'll write that next. So I'll tick it because I'll put it on my projects and task list. Then it tells me the goal is clear, not just almost clear or not, not clear at all. And then you'll go through each of the criteria to look at simplicity of the text, how short it is. So a simple ISS um, literacy level. For short text, we look at the number of characters. For humanity, we ask ourselves questions like, are we using jargon? Are we using internal language? Um, are we respecting voice and tone? For accessibility, we're looking at things like, have we written the alt tags? Is there enough white space? Is there enough contrast? Are we using emojis? Do they make sense for someone using a screen reader? And for inclusive, are we gender neutral if we need to be? Um, have we considered translations and have we considered all the localizations that we need to do? So I know this is really quick going through the UX writing checklist right now, but there are videos if you choose to get the toolbox. These are the tools from this toolbox. Now let's go into the more blueprint, the more project management side of it. So the first part is your content design HQ. The way I've made it is so that it shows you what your focus is for this week specifically. Um, I've included three different views. And once you've got the template, you can add any other views that you would like. So the first one is you see your project with the tasks that are related to each of the project. You can also choose to see it in a Kanban board. I know a lot of people like to have the, this is in progress, this is on hold, this is coming next. So you can use a Kanban board using the status function to see your, um, to see your projects. And then I've also added low score content. So this is the content that has been evaluated using the UX writing checklist. And it's sorted by basically the ones that score the least good at the top. So that if you want to just have a quick win, you can go by that and decide, you know what, this one, that's only 25% there. Let's go see what's missing. Let's open it up and let's see what we can do to try to improve this one. So this is what your content design HQ is about. It's about just giving you a home where you go, you see what's on your project plan for the week. You could decide to add a lot of different things to your content design HQ. You can um, add in a calendar view. You can add in um, some more specific tasks. If you have a team, you will you might want to see what each person is working on. Um, there's many ways to customize this. this. Now, when it comes to project management with Notion, a lot of people, what they do is they have a database of tasks. So it's a list of all the tasks and then a database of projects and they link them together. I haven't done that at all. 
for content designers, what I've made, which I think makes more sense, you have a database of all your content. And then you have a database of your projects and your tasks, and they are linked together. So let me show you what that means. We're going to open the projects and task to show you quickly, but then I'm going to go back to the content before we jump back in here. So the projects and tasks, the way I've done it is I'm using sub projects. So you see the little, um, the little triangle here, it's a toggle, you open it. So what I've made it is so that when it's a top level item, that's your project. And when it's something that's under it, a sub item, that's your task. So it's the little things you need to do for each of the projects. It's all in the same database. So you never have to worry that they're actually sitting in different places in your Notion space. And then your content, if you go for your content, you've got your database of all your content. For any of those, you'll see there's little buttons, new content, new project, new task. You can click on it and it creates a new project, a new, new piece of content or um, a new task. Um, I'm going to show you how it works with Figma. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a Figma uh, screen. We're going to create a piece of content and we're going to attach it to a project. So please don't judge me on the actual quality of this wireframe. It's just, it's a very basic wireframe of a, a page um, just to show you how it works. So I'm going to call this one that's ready to get started, start a free trial. We're going to call that just the CTA page, I think. You need to have the share settings on for your Figma where anyone who needs to see the link would have access um, and you copy the link. Now, this changes depending on how you work with your company, who's getting access to what. But as long as you click share and you get the link, that's all you need for now. So in the content, we're going to add a new page here. I'm going to say new CTA page. I'm going to open it up and I'll show you how I add everything. So here it says UX score. We're not going to worry about that. This gets filled out automatically after I've taken the time to go through the checklist I showed you. Projects and tasks, we haven't done that yet. The type, all right, we know this is a landing page. The author, we're going to say I'm the author, editor, just for fun, I'm going to add Juval in here, and it's going to be approved by me. Um, you can add, I've got publishing and review date. Um, so, and you can, you can move these around too. You can decide, no, no, I want to have the review date. I want to see it first. We're going to review it on that day so that it can be published two days later. And here's the magic of Figma. So in the property here, you paste the link that you had. Please click the the plus here or press enter. Otherwise it doesn't do anything. And then you've got the link to the page. So if I'm here and I've opened the piece of content in um, Notion, I click on this and you'll see it takes me straight to Figma. So I don't need to do the back and forth of copying the link, opening my Figma and going into it. Full disclosure, I'm working in the browser right now. If you're working within the apps, um, Sometimes I do know that Notion and Figma can be a little bit fiddly that way. The workaround is simply open your Notion and your Figma in your browser and you can work this way. It should still work. It's just sometimes it's not perfect. Uh, also, if you just hover your mouse over it, you can see already the preview of your Figma file. So you don't even need to open it to see what it is. And then what I've done for your content is you can write a short description. You can choose to write your content in there if you want to as well or you can embed Figma. So once again, I'm going to click on it. I'm going to add the link again. And this time I see the full screen of my Figma file. In this case, I chose to just um, show this layer, but if you have, um, let's say an onboarding process where there's quite a lot of screens, you would see the full file. It would look quite small, but you can still see it straight away from your Notion. So this is a new piece of content that we've added in our content database that's linked to the Figma file that we have that we're working on. You still need to go in Figma to change the copy, but at least in uh, Notion, you can decide to use some of the, um, the space you've got for writing to write a bunch of different versions, to write a lot of drafts, um, and to just have someone else have a look at it before you play in the design files. Now, I filled out everything. The one thing we don't have is we haven't related it to a project to, or a task. So what I can do, if it's a new project, I would go down here, I would add new, and I would add a new project. 
another way that you can do it over here at the top projects and tasks, I can click on this and decide, is there already a project related to this? So maybe this is actually related to my big project. So if I click on this, it's related to the project. When we'll go into a project page, we'll see that there's this new content piece that's attached to it. So, and you can see it here, all content, it's attached to the big project. We haven't done the UX score yet, so it doesn't have anything. And we haven't done the UX writing checklist. Let's go back to projects and tasks. So if we go here and I go to my big project, I see they've added the new CTA page as part of the content related to this project. I might choose though to say, well, you know what? This is not just um, a file that's um, just for this project. It's kind of a small task. So I'll say here, I'll add a little task and I'll say review CTA page. Sorry for the typos. And I can decide, you know what? I actually want to link this here. And here it is. So I can put in a little task related to the project. That's up to how your brain works, how you like to organize a task versus a project. You might already have a system that works and you just need to make yourself a content database. Um, and yeah, and that's how that's how basically it works. Um, in the projects and tasks, one thing I forgot to show you, you can see in the tabs here, you can see your projects and tasks by calendar. When a project has lots of dates, it will highlight on all the days, or if it's specific to one day, you'll see it on just the one day. You can see a bit like we saw before, you can see your projects by status. Because a project has sub items, um, I've made it so that you can see for each project, each of the tasks related to that project. And you can also see it in a timeline if you prefer to see it that way. That is especially useful for those who use sprints because you wanna see your two weeks, you wanna see where you start, where you end, or for those who have projects where there's um, things dependent on other things where you have to say, well, if I move this, the next thing needs to move as well. So this is then an overview of what the content designers um, toolbox is about. I can see that we're starting to have a lot of questions. So I think we might just jump into the questions if that's okay with everyone. Let me see. Um, Okay, someone said, how do we connect project goals and impact and OKRs to a project, not just content impact? Um, for that, you would need a separate database of your project goals or um, what you could do also is in your projects and task um, database. Actually, let me open it this way. So you can see better. There's all the different properties that you've got for each project. So if I open the project, you could decide to add more properties here. Um, so that's where you could decide to set yourself, especially with numbers, if you have a specific target that you want to hit. So you could decide to do a number and you'd have to start playing with the more advanced functions of um, Notion. So let's say for number, I've got a target that and the target it, it depends what your okrs are some are very specific and quantitative some are qualitative so that's going to be um a little bit tricky to, to gauge so you could have the target actual it kind of puts it in a strange order here so i've got my actual so i can say don't know if, if i've got a target of 100 and i've managed to do let's say 20 and then you will need to add um, basically a formula to calculate how far, how much progress you've done. Um, so you've got the formulas here. Formulas are way more advanced feature of Notion, but you can use them to see where your target is at. And you can see also, you can see it on progress bars um, and you can get relations from a bunch of different databases to make it even more complex. I hope that answers that question a little bit. It would need a much more um, in-depth system than what this content designer toolbox is. Um, someone says everything connects automatically. It seems it's as connected as possible so that 
you're not left with a piece of content that just sits somewhere um, lost on its own. Um, I've had that happen sometimes where a client has a big list of content they want to review. Um, and there's just this one piece that doesn't seem to make it to a Figma file or is not linked to my documents. I've linked everything so that you know everything has a home. Um, everything has its place and everything is attached to a project. It's not just a, a piece of content that's there randomly, like a, like a post-it note you've left on the side of your desk. All right, let me see if there are other questions. So, I so let me know question. if I, I haven't. Yeah. There's another question here on the Q&A and &A. Uh, jo Juan is asking how to integrate this to a project if the PMs, shareholders, and teammates are using Atlassian tools like Confluence or Jira? Mm -hmm. So that's going to be tricky because there... I have a good answer to this, by the way. <laughs> you can have... So to me, if you decide to choose to use Notion for your own project management, it probably won't link... It, like, you can have... You can do... There are some integrations. And you could definitely do that. But I kind of almost expect the way the question is placed that that's someone who's a contractor working with them. So he wants his own system, but the company works with their own system. You're going to have to use their system um, or you're going to have to convince them that for their content, they should really just use Notion, which is going to be a hard sell. Because if you've already got Atlassian and all those other tools, um, you've got a pretty big system in place already. I've worked with a lot of the Atlassian tools. I've worked with Salesforce. I've worked with Asana. I've worked with Airtable. Um, Asana, Airtable are a little bit easier to integrate in Notion because you could actually just export your whole Asana space, import it into Notion and decide to make the switch. You can integrate them. You, you can make the switch that way. Um, in the end, they're competing tools. So how do they work together? Not always the best from what I understand. And um, just so you know, like I've been, <clears throat> sorry, I've been uh, immersing myself in Notion for almost a year now. Um, so I'm still fairly new at working out these more complex integration with systems like Atlassian and Jira and all that. I hope that answers the question. Then should okay. I, I'll stop sharing my screen, I think, so we can uh, chat about it. So All right, let's I'd see. I'd like to I'd like to share something real quick. So yeah. there's this tool named Make, right? We talked about it on Twitter a bit, Marie, right? Yeah. So I've been uh, using it for the past three to four years. And the Make is a tool that I call it the glue of the internet because you can actually connect different tools to each other, even if they're not like organically integrated. So for mm -hmm. example, uh, you could have like, you could watch a database item. Obviously you need to build the integration. It's not that complicated. And, but you could say that once you update like a database file, like um, to, to one of the things that you've updated in your checklist, then you can connect it uh, to Jira or to Confluence. Like you have all of this Jira cloud platform or Confluence now, I'm not sure exactly if the company is going to give you access to their API, but they might uh, give it to you. It depends on your relationship. Uh, but maybe you can have your own area inside of their project where whatever you work on your own um, content toolbox, you just build these type of automations, this make automations in the background. And once um, you've updated something on Notion, it automatically also updates it on Confluence or Jira. So that's how I would approach it. Like that would be my no-code uh, perspective on things. That's my that's my next challenge is learning to use um, Make to be able yeah, to go beyond to, I'd love Notion. To coach you with it. And I know how Notion and Figma, Figma work really well together. Um, but I think there's more that can be done so that, and I kind of wonder even with Notion and Make, uh, Notion, Make and Figma, could you even have, when someone updates something on Figma, sends a comment, it sends a notification to your Notion. So you don't even have to, so if you're the writer and you don't want, you really want to just be the writer who works with your Notion, you can stay there and still get a notification when something happens in Figma. I, um, I stopped sharing not... my screen. 
but um, just um, do we have another question? Yes, we have a few. We have uh, a few. All right. Uh, uh, Let's we have go just the... comments. Let's check it out real quick. So, all right. Caleb, I can't remember the exact terminology used in the Notion template. Could you explain how the usability score percentage is calculated? Um, yes, I can explain it quickly. Um, it's so there's a video in the template and you can get the UX. I'll send you the link. You can get that template for free. You can get the videos. I explain exactly how it works, not just how you use it, but how it works behind the scenes and the formulas so that you can change the criteria. So for different things, like I think for accessibility, I made it so that if you had three out of the four, or is it four out of the five criteria that were ticked. So you looked at the alt tags, there's enough white space, there's enough contrast. It gives you a passing grade for that. So it gives you the tick on the six criteria. And in the end, the percentage is how many of these criteria have you hit? But you may decide to go in that database. You can change the formula and say, you know what, for us, accessibility is the topmost priority. We need 100%. It doesn't get a passing grade until everything has been reviewed and everything ticks all the boxes. Um, so when this is um, over, I'll add the link to, um, we'll send you an email with all the recap and everything. I'll add a link to that template, which is free. You can go get it, watch the video. I show you exactly how to do it. If I was to do it now, it would take us another like 10, 15 minutes at least. And um, I know there's a video that already explains it all. If that doesn't help you, send me an email. I'm super open to getting emails with more questions after my inbox is open to you guys. That's awesome. Okay. Uh, would you mind if I will uh, do like a short marketing plug for the UX Writing Hub? Yeah, no, go for it. <laughs> All right, everyone. So first of all, um, we talked briefly about Make. While we were talking, we can actually, I noticed that we can actually do really cool stuff. Like, for example, scrape all of the comments on Figma and drop them on Notion and do like really, really cool stuff and creative no-code stuff. Uh, I want to show, show you something cool that I've built lately. For example, this is a tool that we've built as part of the AI um, Design Academy program. This is how it works with Make. So I connected another tool to it, which is Airtable. So what this tool is doing, and it can take an article. I can just drop the article real quick. And I press this button and automatically what's happening right now is that it takes the data from Airtable. Then it uses another AI tool named Perplexity AI. It's scrape all of the data. And then it send it to ChatGPT, and then it send it to Notion and creating a marketing brief for my marketing manager. So basically, I designed an AI operation, an AI product that served me well, and it helped me to build my business basically, and and design tools for my business. All of these things that I teach how to do, including like how to use Airtable, Perplexity AI, ChatGPT, and even Notion. I will show you afterwards how the Notion document looks like it's still loading. Uh, we teach it at the AI Design Academy. This is an eight weeks program uh, that gives you a solid foundation in prompt engineering and prompt design, an extensive library of AI use cases. And by the end of it, you're going to actually build an AI product. It could be an AI agent or an AI um, operation, just like this in Make. We had a student that built uh, a dungeon master AI agent, but also practical um, AI tools. We actually dive deep into AI features in product design and UX, and, and that's more or less about it. Uh, we have already, this is going to be our fourth cohort, and we actually have five more seats left. This is actually a live cohort, and I'm uh, giving one-on-one -on -one coach to all of the students that are joining. And it's very boutique, very small, it's limited. So we have five more seats and eight weeks program. We're going to meet live every week. Also, I'll guide you as part of a group. And I also guide you with one-on-one -on -one sessions. If you will tell me, hey, Yuval, I have this new crazy automation that I want to build uh, with Make, just like this one that I've just created, I will help you to do it. Check it out. So this is like the... Notion doc that was created. I just built it like maybe two days ago. 
and we designed the product that really helped me uh, in my business. It's scrape the data and actually create some kind of a marketing brief. I can basically also get really creative here and maybe add an email and with that email, maybe send it to my marketing manager and we could get really, really creative. So if you'll join the AI Design Academy, I'll show you everything I know about AI, no code and UX. And specifically also how it can help you as UX writers, but not only because all of the products that we're going to build in the next few years are going to be AI products. And so you don't want to miss that train. This is the link to the AI Design Academy. And thank you, Anita. Thank you, everyone. Uh, you don't have to be physically there. It's an online class. Check it out. Make is a free tool, by the way. I pay it, but that's because I use it a lot. And yeah, Marie, you can take it away. All right. Um, I'm just going to share my screen one last time, guys, because I forgot about a little thing. Um, here you go. Just please bear with me. All right. Can you see the QR code? Can anyone so, see it? Um, can to you everyone see? that, yes, we can see it. To everyone that joined us, you Good have also a discount yes. to yes. get the template. Okay, cool. Yeah, so there's a discount. I don't know if I'm standing in the way of the discount. It's, um, I'm gonna write it in the chat. The discount is UXW8 for UX writing up. 50. Um, whoops, I wrote it wrong in the chat. Sorry about that. Um, it's a discount co code for the template that I uh, did the demo for today. It's 50% off. The price is $25 Australian dollars. So I think when you take into account the 50% off, if you're in the US or in Europe, it ends up being less than $10, like eight or $9. The price is going up next week because I will be adding some smaller demo videos. Um, and I might do um, some slight changes. Anyone who buys it, if I make any change, you get all the latest version. Um, I'm not someone, I did that with my book. If my book gets a new version and you bought it when it was in its early release, you get all the next versions. That's just part of um, how I do the work. Um, so if you're interested, you can go get the template. If it works for you, awesome, let me know. If you're having trouble with it, let me know too. Let me help you. Um, I can help you get the template working for you specifically if you run into something. Um, and I saw a few other questions. Someone asked if Make is free. You, there's a free plan that is really good that you can definitely use and make the most out of without having to pay as well. Um, it works a bit like Zapier. So if anyone's used Zapier in the past, it's kind of like that, um, way more affordable and a lot more flexible from what I understand. It's crazy. Um, and yeah, so I think by now we've answered pretty much. Um, so someone's asked where they can add the code. If you buy the product when it's time to pay, there should be a place for a discount code where you can add the code. You just need um, to scan the, scan the QR code that you see right now on the screen. Use your mobile yeah. device to scan it. Just open your camera, click the link, and then you could put it over there. Yeah. Um, and if that uh, doesn't work, we're sending you an email. Thank you, email, with all the links and everything. Remember the code. The code is for you guys because you stayed with me for a whole hour. <laughs> thank you very <laughs> much. That's my way of saying thank you to you guys. Um, and I think that's it for me. Yeah, that's awesome. Like Marie woke up at 4 a.m. in the morning to run this call today. She's in Australia. I stayed up to 11 p.m. here in Tel Aviv. So we're very excited about this topic. Obviously, we're happy, very happy you sticked all the way to the end. Uh, some people wrote to me already and that they found it really useful. So please uh, and make sure to uh, open the uh, email after we'll send you the recordings, share it with your friends, uh, join us for one of our upcoming events. Um, and that's about it. I'm going to leave here a form, a feedback form. If you could help us out, write us some feedback and also general thoughts about other um, events you'd like us to do in the future. We listen to you. We'd love to have more of this type of events to give you more value for free. Uh, I see here in the chat that many people are very, very happy. 
uh, about it. So that's great. Thank you, Marie. And uh, yeah, that's about it. I'm plugging in the AI Design Academy again. As I said, five more seats. Very happy to have uh, you. If you stayed all the way here, it means that you care about this field, you care about this topic. So I'd love to have you. And don't uh, forget to check Marie's template. Building something like that, a system like that, it takes like weeks, if not months. It's like building a digital product, basically. So a template like that is a digital product. And instead of building it from scratch, you can actually get it for like 10 bucks. So I wouldn't uh, miss that opportunity. Uh, so yeah, that was about, um, I'd say a month, a month and a half of doing this. Um, like not every hour of every day, but right. I'm the kind of builder and I was the kind of writer. I just need a lot of time in between doing things because I'll be thinking as I'm going at, oh, this is how I'm going to link this. This is how it's going to work. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of work put into this. It takes time. And actually, we build systems at the UX Writing Hub. We have a system for our mentors, system for our students, system for our freelancers and clients. And building each system takes a lot of time. Um, so that's right. about it. Can't um, wait to I'm teach all of you. Yeah. Some people are having uh, trouble putting the discount code. It should be once you get to the payment. So you click... I think it's that I want this and there should be a space for the discount. If it doesn't work on your mobile, maybe check the, um, try the browser version. I will look it up when we've logged off because I need to go into uh, my gum road shop to uh, check that out. But there should be a space when it's time to pay to give the code before you pay. So make sure you put it in. We'll put it in the email if we find anything um, that doesn't seem to work. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And Marie, thank you so much. It was amazing. You're welcome. That was fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. We, uh, yeah, we should talk. We need to talk about how to we will. Uh, talk more about this system building. I feel like both of us are very, very passionate about it. Maybe we can have a series of events even just for the people that care about system building. I feel yep. like that could be a good. That'd be uh, fun. We could try to do something together, just build it live. Oh, that's going to be awesome. Like I could be in charge of no of Airtable, you could be in charge of Notion, I could connect with Make, whatever you want me to connect. We could uh, challenge ourselves. Do yeah. it live on YouTube, right. whatever. <laughs> well, let's chat again soon. And thanks Sounds everyone good. for coming. Have a good day, Marie. And have a good thanks. night for all of our European <laughs> friends. <Day. laughs> I leave I left one more uh, link to the feedback form. So check it out. Yep. And uh, we'll catch you with a few emails afterward. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye.